Hey, Hamilton. I hear Skepticality has a new episode out. Yeah, let's go listen to it. Skepticality. Science. Hello, everyone. This is Susan Gerbic speaking to you about the GSOW, Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project. I was breezing through our secret forum tonight, wondering what might interest the Skepticality listeners. Last episode, I mentioned that GSO has rewritten Derek's Wikipedia page, and the Skepticality page rewrite will soon be completed. I've been a regular contributor for almost two years now, and I really appreciate the support I've received from Derek and a lot of you. I've been on many podcasts, but Skepticality is where I have received the majority of my editors. Everyone is a little different. Some tell me that they volunteered for the project after hearing about it just the one time. They've been looking for something they could do that was really important and could be done from home, and we were their perfect fit. Others tell me that they've been listening to me for months, and finally I wore them down. They have been wanting to join, but just couldn't seem to do it. Training can take weeks or months, and I usually handle all the training, and I love it. Everything is hands-on, and I give lots of instruction and, and examples, and lots and lots of feedback, and everything is checked before it goes live on Wikipedia, and everything is done at your own pace. Once you're finished with me, then I move you to an editing team. I currently have two English teams, Curie and Sagan, or possibly you'd be moved to a language team, or maybe you'd be on a couple teams. It just depends. Once you're on a team, you work on whatever you want, and your peers are there to help you. Reading through these threads in the forum, I'm really amazed at the quality of feedback and the help that is given. We are really strong. Thinking about all this, I wanted to reward all you listeners by telling you about what Team Skepticality has achieved. Well, not that I have a Team Skepticality, but you know what I mean. People who joined GSOW who first heard about the project from the podcast. Remember, these Wikipedia pages would probably never have been completed if not for Derek and Swoopy allowing me to speak to you. I was also curious about how many people have viewed my editor's work since they published it, so I talk about that here in a minute. So I'm picking two names, almost by random, off a list of 15 editors that came to me from Skepticality. And I've had a lot more than 15 editors over the last two years, but most people underestimate the amount of commitment that this project takes. So many people sadly do not finish their training. Considering what we're trying to do and how much work there is to be done on these pages, I'm amazed at how many do finish and continue to ask for more work. Chris Allen has been a Wikipedia editor since 2005, but mostly small and tame edit. He heard about GSOW on Skepticality and joined us in January of 2014, and he has rewritten three pages, Nathan Phelps, Center for Inquiry, and the Montauk Project which was just finished a few weeks ago. He also added a criticism section to the Montel Williams page, which now contains an open letter written in 2007 from fellow retired military officer Hal Bidlack, which asks, Commander Williams, have you lost your honor? And this is because of Montel's support of psychic Sylvia Brown for many years. You really should read Bidlack's open letter to Montel. It's quite well done. I don't think Montel has ever responded, but I remembered this letter and I asked Chris to make sure it got added onto the Wikipedia page. If we can't get Montel to respond, then at least it's in a place that his fans can read it. And read it they can. It's only been a month, and Montel's Wikipedia page has already had over 40,000 views. The Montauk Project is a UFO conspiracy. It's often related to the Philadelphia Project. In the time since Chris has published this rewrite, already over 11,000 people have read his work. The Center for Inquiry page rewrite has been read over 10,000 times. Chris had been working on the rewrite of Nathan Phelps and was almost done when we received news that Nathan's father, Fred Phelps, you know him from the Westboro Baptist, had died. Chris worked for several hours to make sure that anyone visiting the Westboro or Fred Phelps pages saw the hyperlink back to Nathan's page and viewed it was. Since publishing Nathan's page, it has been viewed over 117,000 times. So for just this one editor who came to GSOW because of skepticality, 182,854 people have viewed these four pages since Chris was involved. And keep in mind that Chris has done a lot more work than the four pages I've mentioned. 
So let's pick one more name from the large group of team skepticality. Cohen de Bruin. Sorry about that, Cohen. I'm sure I mispronounced that. Who heard about GSO on skepticality and joined in January of this year. Cohen was not an editor before, but was active in the skeptic world before hearing about us. He is a published author on stats and politics and has written a Dutch app for various skeptic projects. He quickly learned to edit Wikipedia and is now on the Dutch and the Sagan English teams. Cohen has worked on many pages, but I'm only going to pick a few to talk about. In March, he translated the English page into Dutch for the Cosmos TV series, and this was time to appear that the day the day the Cosmos was released in the Netherlands. And since this page's creation, it's had over 20,000 views. And that's in Dutch. Cohen also took a horrible, embarrassing English Wikipedia stub page for Jan Zanin and turned it into something respectable. Zanin is a professor, a professor of theoretical physics in the Netherlands. He's also known for his contributions to the understanding of quantum physics of the electrons and strongly correlated material. I know all this because I've read his Wikipedia page. This man knows what quantum means. Maybe someone should tell Deepak Chopra. Anyway, since Cohen has published his rewrite, already 1,900 people have viewed his work. And that's pretty sad that an amazing man like Zanin gets so little attention compared to Montel Williams, who had his own talk show years ago. I suppose if we can get Zanin's own talk show, have him interview other amazing scientists, we might get some more views. Or put a grief vampire in his show and he'll get millions of views. Now, very sad. Just wanted to add that Conan also tra translated the English Simon Singh Wikipedia page into Dutch and already has had over 500 views. So think about these numbers. It is difficult to know if we should work on this page or that one. Potential page views might be a factor in deciding what pages people work on. But as I said, once I finish training, it is all up to the editor to pick their own topics. I mean, this is fun after all. I want people to work on what they want to work on. And you never know, a page might receive only a few hundred views a month, and then that person appears in the public's eye for something, and overnight the page might receive thousands of views. And when that happens, the page will be waiting for readers. Between Conan and Chris, in the few months that they've been trained, GSOW editors, they've had over 200,000 views of their work. That's just the beginning of these pages. Every month there will be more, and Chris and Cohen aren't close to being done yet. We need to respect our spokespeople and get scientific skepticism out beyond the choir. And this is how we do that. Oh yeah, a quick shout out to two brand new recruits who joined last week after learning about us from Skepticality, Lauren Carr and Jean Rosenberry. Now stop listening to podcasts and get back to your training, guys. If you've finally been worn down or hearing about this project for the first time and think it's the perfect fit for you, write to us at gsowteam at gmail.com. Thank you.